Hey everyone, welcome. It's Carrie from Carrie's Wreath Creations. Hope everyone is doing well. Today is Monday, July 11th. If you are not watching on Monday, July 11th, it's about 7.20 p.m. Eastern. You are watching a replay. If you're on YouTube, you're watching a replay. Um, but thanks for joining me today. So today we are going to be working on a peacock wreath um, with peacock colors. So um, I had kind of gotten this started yesterday and um, had a couple hiccups along the way and so um, decided to postpone until I was able to um, get my get my thoughts together as to how I wanted to put this together. Uh, but I'm going to tell you all about the materials I'm using. I do have the wreath already started um, to save some time here and then we'll, uh, so we'll finish it off together. Um, if you're here joining, feel free to say hi and let me know where you're watching from. Um, so we are going to be working on a large board. So if you watch me regularly, I usually do not use the large Unique in the Creek board. Um, but for what I'm doing, I decided that was going to work better. Um, that was kind of one of the hiccups I had yesterday, which was I thought I was going to use a small board, and then I decided to use a large board because what I wanted to do for the center was not going to work on a small board. So I had to change that up. We're going to be using three different kinds of deco mesh. I did buy it as a three pack, like a trio from Unique in the Creek. I do not believe they still have it in stock, but I do have the... Um, the labels and the item numbers, I believe you can buy it all separately as well. So it lets you know which three uh, meshes we are using. And again, we are using the large board. Okay, so this is the Unique in the Creek board. We are using um, rows two, three, four, and five. I do have every set of holes on row two already loaded and I do have the petals already in. I will show you how to fold the petals. I do have every set of holes on row three that I've already actually put the petals in there as well. You'll notice that some of these holes do have a second zip tie in and I'll explain that in a second, but that's where we're gonna put some peacock feathers. We do need to finish off rows four and five as well as the center, okay? So that's what we're doing on the large board. So I will show you how to fold the petals. I am doing two petals per zip tie, okay? So for the mesh, um, on the outside, this outside row, which is row two, I used, I don't actually need any more of it, but I did use almost the entire roll. Uh, I only actually have two pieces left. I did wood burn the mesh, it's 10 by 10. I used this um, royal uh, navy blue. Okay, so that's what's on the outside. So it's just kind of a dark, uh, maybe if I fold it in half, you can see the color, color a little better, but it's like a royal blue with the metallic stripe. And if you're interested in that, it is item number RE130157, just called Deco Poly Mesh. So I'm actually all done with that, but I did use almost the whole roll. There's only two pieces left. Okay. The second kind of mesh that I'm going to be using, I did use... Um, on row two, I used all of this kind of mesh here, which is this really pretty kind of ombre, um, iridescent sort of looking. It's hard, maybe a little hard to tell on camera, maybe if I get it more into like natural light. It's blue with like a greenish tinge to it. And that is called Metallic Royal Blue slash Peacock. And that is item number RE1301MX. By giving you these item numbers, you can literally just go into Google, type those numbers in, and it'll show you where it's available. Um, like I said earlier, I bought this as a three-pack from Unique in the Creek. I do have an affiliate link um, in the pinned post on my Facebook page. Um, however, I don't know that they still have the trio available. I bought this quite a while ago, um, but you could buy these individually. I think they were all available when I looked. But again, this one with the green and blue kind of, um, uh, I don't know. I keep saying iridescent. It just depends how the light hits it, if it looks blue or green. RE1301MX. And then finally, and I, I need some more of this, so I'm not going to get rid of it. Um, <clears throat> and then finally, I'm going to be using this teal, metallic teal color, and that is RE130160. So I'm going to be using that. So we are going from dark to light as we do our petals here. 
Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I already did rows one and two. Before I do row three, or I'm sorry, I already did I already did rows two and three. Sorry to be confusing. Row one, we are not putting anything in row one on the large board. Okay, row two, I did the dark blue and row three on the board, the way they're labeled. So row two is the blue, row three is the um, this uh, bluish green color. Before we go on though, and I did put an extra zip tie in every other set of holes here, so a total of four. So I do have these peacock feathers. And I bought these from Hobby Lobby. On a, uh, they were on a stem and they came, um, there was, I have a total of 10. I think I'm only gonna use eight. Uh, but there was five peacock feathers and then a couple of these like little accent pieces, which I am going to do something with this for the center. This was another reason I did not end up doing this yesterday because I couldn't figure out what to do for the center. But basically you find them in the floral section and I think it was, four or five ninety nine for the whole stem. I bought two. Okay. So I did leave the stems a little bit long when I cut these up. And that's because I'm not exactly sure what I know I want to have happen. And let me grab, I have a couple petals pre-made that are going to go on the next row. So the next row is going to be this blue green with the teal. So it's two petals per zip tie. I want to make sure that when I put my peacock feather in, that the petal is not going to cover it once the petal is in. So I do want the stems kind of long and the petal will cover that stem. So I am gonna put those in. I do have my hot glue gun going, um, just in case I wanna reinforce with a little bit of hot glue. But I think I'm gonna put them, and I think what I'll do as a guide is just sort of make sure that the tip of the feather doesn't go past the edge of the outside roll of petals and that's where I'm gonna zip it in. So right about there, okay? And I'm gonna do, and again, I have this loaded so I can do every other. And these were kind of going every which way on the, um, the stem. So uh, some of them just needed to be bent so that they're straight, okay? So just like that my way so feel free to say hi let me know where you're watching from again we are here live it is close to 7 30 eastern time on monday july 11th if you are not watching at that time you are watching a replay it's nice that this has a little bit of wire in here so if they're laying kind of funky you can just play around with them so they lay the way that you want. And I might actually play around with them more once I get everything put together. Hello, hello everyone, thanks for joining. All right, so one last one here. Um, okay, I know it might be a little off camera at this point, but all right. So I think what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to put, before I put the next row of petals, I'm just going to, well, actually clip off the end of my zip ties. And then I'm going to put just a little, a little dab of glue to make sure that those aren't going to go anywhere. Cause like that one just moved when I clipped the zip tie off. Um, but that's okay. We'll just fix it the way I want it and just put that little dab of glue. Oops, let's let this kind of long. Actually, it's because I'm doing this the wrong way. Well, every once in a while, there's that user failure on the uh, zip tie gun there. All right, so we got our little zip tie nubs cut off. And, okay. Oops, didn't mean to. Hello, hello. All right. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little dab of glue and in hindsight, like if I knew that this was how I was gonna do this, I probably would not have a second zip tie going on here. I would have just put it in with the petal. But I'm gonna tell you, I had all kinds of trouble yesterday figuring out how I wanted to do this. I've had this wreath in my head for so long. And then when it came time to actually doing it, I just had so many problems. Like I couldn't figure out what size board to use. And then I made this really beautiful center 
And if I would have used a small board, it would have taken up the entire thing. So then I dismantled that. Then I decided I should just go ahead and use a, um, a large board so I don't have to worry about what size it is. But then I came up with a different idea from the center. It was just a whole, it was a whole thing. All right, okay. So just give me that a second to dry. Um, and I will go ahead and show you, I'm gonna move this out of the way while these are, just get letting that hot glue set. I'll show you how to fold the petals. So very simple, how we're gonna do that. So they're gonna end up looking like this. So again, on row two, which was the outside row, we did all of the dark blue, which I already put on the floor because I don't need any more of it. So the dark blue, and then on the um, row three, which was our second row, we did this blue-green um, kind of ombre thing. And then on row four, we're gonna do one petal of the ombre and one of the teal, and then the center is gonna have mostly the teal. So we're going kind of from dark to light. So these are cut at 10 by 10, this is the final product. So what we're gonna do is take our piece of 10 by 10. I did wood burn this, which let me tell you was like another whole thing of why I didn't feel like doing a live yesterday because it took so long. I really am not a fan of deco mesh, um, period. And I, um, Definitely learned yesterday that I hate wood burning it. I mean, with a passion. I just couldn't get the lines straight. It was, I had to pass through like two or three times because I was trying to go, go too fast. But you're gonna take this, I'm gonna do this curl side down. Okay, it's 10 by 10. And then start at one corner. All you're gonna do is scrunch up to the other corner. And just pay attention to where your factory edges are because when you have your, your final product, you want your factory edges to be the ones that are showing. Okay, so that your cut edges are hidden. If it's, um, you know, with it being wood burned, you would hope that it's not gonna fray, but there's always a possibility. So just start at one corner and just scrunch up to meet the other corner, just like this. Okay, and then take your one petal, I'm taking my, the right petal and just gonna swing it around and have it sort of overlay the left one, not overlapping too much because I do want it to look like two distinct petals, just like this, okay? And then I'm going to clip this because I'm doing two petals per zip tie. So I need to get my other um, piece. And for this row, we're gonna do the, um, the teal as our second petal. So curl side down, okay? And then all we need to do is just start at one corner and scrunch up. So this petal here is, you can use this for a lot of different things. Um, you can, not, well, I'm using it as flower petals. I actually use this more often as um, leaf petals. Like if I'm putting leaves on a flower, I'll do this petal. And if you don't like, if it like that one, it kind of looked like my right petal was a little bit kind of bigger and like it was going to lay higher than this one. I just readjust adjust where I pinched it. Okay. And then I'm just going to put one next to the other, remove my clip. I would put this right into the board, but one of the things I, I the, the large board is fine, but one of the things I don't like is that I don't have enough space at my table sometimes for all that. So I'm just gonna band that together with a little rubber band. And I think we need to make three, I'm right. I made some ahead of time. Let me just count what I have here so I know how many I need to make. I think I only need to make one or two more. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I need to make two more. So I need eight for that row. So just make two more and follow the same method. And that'll be it for this kind of petal. I'm going to do something a little different in the center and hopefully it's going to work. So again, curl side down 10 by 10 and just scrunch from corner to corner. Okay. And again, we're, we're taking that factory edge and hiding the cut edge by you know putting that over top so that way your your factory edge is the one that's showing okay so just like this okay and put a clip on that so i can fold my other one this is really pretty in person it might not be showing up too well on the camera i'm looking at the camera and it looks like this is just plain blue and that this is like almost like a light blue, but it really is. This is definitely teal. And the other one is, depending how the light hits it, it looks blue or it looks kind of like the teal green color. 
it's really it's really cool it looks really cool on top of that dark blue that I have on the outside which when I get the wreath back out you'll see that again um, but they look really cool layered together so I'm guessing that was why it was that was sold in like a three pack Maybe a couple more bands here and my dog is gonna chew a bone right in the background there that's Jax. So if you've been following at all, my other dog, not him, my other dog Stella had surgery last week on her knee and she's doing very well. She is chilling on the couch in front of me. So she's never too far from wherever I'm at. Um, so looks like she's behaving herself. I gotta keep an eye on her, make sure she's not doing anything wild and crazy, but looks like she's kind of just staring Jax down right now, probably because she wants the bone that he has. <laughs> it's just how things normally go in the Snively household. But you know, he's going to lay right there and chew that. <laughs> yeah, talk about you, bud. All right, so again, curl side down, 10 by 10, and just scrunch from corner to corner. And then take... For me, I'm doing the right, flipping it up over the left because that's where my factory edge is, so that's what I want to be showing, so just like this. So I just kind of turn it and pinch at the bottom, just like that, and then I'm putting my two petals together to make one big petal. Um, oh, Jax. And the funny thing is that thing that he's chewing has been laying around since 9.30 this morning. So, you know, right now is a great time to get to work on chewing that. Okay, I think that was it. Did I count right? I didn't, I wasn't counting, I was talking. So if we need another one, we'll make another one, but I think that was it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that was it, okay. So let's get our wreath back out and put these on. I don't always put the curl side down, no. The curl side, I actually almost always do curl side up. But for this, because um, because of the, I don't know, the deco mesh is a little harder to flatten, which was kind of another reason why I didn't go live yesterday, because it was very curly and I had just cut it and there was like no way it was going to flatten. Um, but it always still has that natural curl. And because um, of the way we're folding this petal, it just naturally looks better. <clears throat> excuse me, curl side down. You're not really doing too much folding. It's more of just a scrunch and a pinch. Um, so that's why we don't, uh, for this particular one, I don't do the curl side uh, up like I do in many other petals. Okay, so we're just gonna zip these in. And it is gonna, we're gonna have, I mean, obviously it'll be a little bit covering up our peacock feather, but we have, um, I'm doing another layer of those, so I'm not too concerned. We'll still get enough of that effect going on. And of course I'm paying attention to the way I'm putting these in the board so that way I'm following the pattern where the um, factory edge is always up, you know, kind of on the top here. So I'm going, which way is that, clockwise? So that they're already like naturally right, laying the right way. Oh my gosh, they're all sticking. I'm going to put these on the ground because I can't stand it. Um, I'm telling you, deco mesh is not my favorite. It's so beautiful for different kinds of flowers, for sure. Um, but I can't stand how it sticks to things. I can't stand how it frays. I definitely did not enjoy wood burning it. There are so many things I did not like about this. That made me very frustrated yesterday. And when my husband said, let's go see a movie, I was like, okay. <laughs> and so I did not finish. I had to put it away for a day and try again the next day. I don't know if anyone else is like that where sometimes you just got to walk away from something and it'll all look better the next day. Okay. All right. Quiet crew here today, unless my comments are not showing up. 
Did anyone go get a Slurpee for 7-Eleven Day? I did not. I don't actually like Slurpees very much. Thanks, Brenda. Alberta, Canada. All right. Oh man, I, get, I got a busted one. That one fell apart, so we'll refold that one. No Slurpees, huh? I did use a wood burner for this, yes, because um, I wanted to make sure it was going to look nice, honestly. Um, and I have done, you know, projects with um, deco mesh um, without using the wood burner, and it's I usually regret it <laughs> um, because of how much fray happens. And it kind of depends. Like I, I've done some butterflies where I haven't. Um, uh, what do you call it? I haven't wood burned and it's like, okay. Cause I feel like the butterfly, it's kind of like wispy on the edges with the wings and all that. Like it doesn't bother me so much, but on a flower, I mean, even when I do my poly burlap flowers, if there is fray, I just want to, it just makes me want to lose my mind. I mean, I just can't stand the way it looks like that. So, um, since this is a flower of sorts, I just felt that I needed to wood burn it. So this one, I'm just going back to where it fell apart. It's my rubber band didn't hold and just repinching without wasting another piece. Even though I have some extra. So the, the if you're just joining the dark blue on the outside, I only had two pieces left from the whole roll, okay? So I used basically an entire roll of that um, royal blue. And then I used, I would have to count how many pieces are gonna be left over of this other stuff. I didn't. I could probably figure out how many petals I just did, but too much math at the moment, too much pressure. <laughs> so I can uh, post that later on if anyone's interested. Okay, and the only thing I gotta do here is because this is my last petal, it just is laying in the wrong spot. Okay, here's the one next to it and they're all following the same pattern. So I want this with my cut edge to be tucked behind this next petal where the factory edge is on the top. Okay, so here's where we're at. Okay, and so now, when I lay out my, um, well, so I'm going to end up doing the same thing that I did on the last row where I'm going to put a second zip tie in where I want my peacock feathers to lay. So I'm going to put them so that they lay in between these other ones. So I could have planned that out ahead of time and not wasted a second zip tie, but honestly, I kind of wanted to see how this, um, looked before I make sure I like how everything's laying out before I go and do that. So okay I buy the zip ties in packs of a thousand from Amazon for like twelve dollars so I don't really feel too bad I don't feel like I'm wasting um so I'm, I'm gonna do I think I have one two, I have six but I don't I'm gonna keep it I need it to be symmetrical so I'm gonna do four and they're just gonna go in between the other ones so I need four more zip ties and I think um I think what I'm gonna end up doing here is putting them I'm gonna put it in between I want it to be in between where so you're probably not even seeing what I'm doing I don't know if you can see but I want to put this so that the feather is in between the other two fe feathers equally distanced so it's actually going to go between the um I'm going to put a zip tie in a shared hole here. I'll show you on the back when I'm done, but that's where I want it to lay, so that's where I'm gonna put it. And I already know I'm gonna need probably a little dab of glue on this to keep it in place. So it's gonna go right here. So let me just zip, I'm gonna zip it in. And this is, this wire does bend a little bit. It's on a stem. I'm gonna kind of bend it a little bit because I don't want it to look too wonky the way it's gonna lay here. So I'm just gonna zip that in right here. Okay, just like that. Get it where I want it exactly. Make sure that's nice and tight with my zip tie. Snip this off. Okay, and then put my glue right here. Get that held in place so that my stem's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, just like 
like that. Let that dry. Move on to the next one here. Okay. You need a tutorial on how to use the zip tie gun. Well, let me tell you, I still have a lot of user error on the zip tie gun, but um, there is a, I've learned there is a right and wrong way to do it. So the way you're, zip, depending on which way your zip tie is facing, I feel like it snips better one way as opposed to the other. And you also almost, if you're not pulling your zip tie tight enough to begin with, you always have to pull the little trigger thing twice because the first time it's tightening it as much as it can tighten it. And then the second time it's actually clipping it. So it almost always, if you're not, if your fingers aren't that strong and you're not pulling your zip tie real tight, it, you always have to do the trigger thing twice because it's gonna tighten and then it's gonna cut. It won't cut until it's tight, as tight as it'll go, okay? And you also gotta make sure you got, it's got these little, you wanna also make sure the zip tie is always going in where those little, in the right spot, where the little teeth are. And you also wanna make sure there's no pieces of like little shreds of zip tie in there. That's my advice on the zip tie gun. <laughs> but it is a great tool to use. Okay, I'm just gonna put one here. We are gonna do a, a slightly different, I can't see what I'm doing, petal for the center. Um, Cause I, I'm gonna be 100% honest. I don't know if the center is gonna work. I think it will, but it gave me a lot of headaches yesterday trying to figure it out. Cause I knew I wanted to use um, the other pieces of these peacock stems that I bought so it had the feathers each stem had five feathers and then these like little wispy thingies little accent pieces and um so I knew I wanted to use those because it's otherwise it's a waste why would I spend you know six dollars or whatever I think it was either five or six dollars per stem um and not use the whole thing okay this one I, the wire is a little I bent it a little bit the wrong way now I'm struggling here but I think that'll be okay once I add my glue Get that nice and tight okay so like that time like user error I had this nub of a zip tie that didn't snip off whether or not whether or not it wants to do it this time is probably gonna be a no there it did actually this tiny little piece that it didn't want to cut off the first time okay so make sure that's laying the way I want it and this is, the board is nice because I'm just putting a whole bunch of glue right on the board. And these ones that I already glued in are nice and I'm not yanking them too tight because why would I do that? But I mean, they're not coming out, so. And then finally, right here, it's gonna be my fourth feather. Hello, hello everyone, thanks for watching. Hope you all had a nice weekend and are having a good Monday so far. Okay, let's see. Do I have any really ugly looking ones? They all look pretty good. This one looks good. All right, so I'm just doing, kind of curling this up just a tiny bit so that way it lays kind of nice on the board. I don't want it to be overly flat and I don't want it to stick up too far, so that all right so what is everyone working on if you're a crafter are you have you moved on to fall already I know I'm seeing lots of fall wreaths and things on people's well on the wreath groups that I follow I see a lot of fall already Ugh. um I haven't done any fall yet but I do have my ribbon kits just about ready to come out. I'm actually probably gonna post them tomorrow. So if you are interested in ribbon kits, posted like a little teaser the other day that showed kind of some of the options I have available. And um, yeah, so I think I'm gonna get those, I'm gonna get those posted. So if you're working on fall and you're looking for some fun ribbon options, 
Oh, my husband's mowing, working on mowing the grass. That is a good thing because let me tell you, taking my Stella out on a leash in like ankle high grass because it rained so much last week has not been super fun. Okay, so for the center, I'm, I'm gonna talk about the center first because I think I'm gonna do the petals and then put the center in, but this is a weird looking center, I know, okay? So what I did was these little stems, there was a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six of them. So there was three per, st per peacock stem. Um, so uh, what, I, what I did, and I started with a half of a styrofoam ball, and I just put a dab of glue on the ends of these and stuck it inside the styrofoam ball. So then my brilliant idea was I was going, I went in and I had the half a styrofoam ball and I put, I was like putting floral pins with mesh and I made this really beautiful center. Well, the beautiful center took up like three quarters of what the final wreath would be. So that was not going to work. So what I did, so what I'm going to do, um, but what I did to this was I took my, I very recently invested in a styrofoam cutter um, it's kind of like a hot knife. It, it's not even like a knife. It's like this like little poker thing that gets very hot and it cuts through styrofoam. So I just shaved off until I had this left. Okay. I put a floral pin with a pipe cleaner in the bottom. So it's going to go through the two middle holes here on my large board. That's where it's going to connect. I'm going to put the petals in first, I think. And then I'm going to just build around it with ruffles. Um, with the mesh and we're going to use this teal color. So I think it's going to work. If it doesn't, you'll be here witnessing live an epic fail, but we'll see what happens. Um, so I'm, I just have four zip ties in right now. I might need eight. I don't know, but we're going to put four. Then we're going to put this in and see how it looks. And if it's too bald in the middle, we'll do um, four more. Okay. That's the plan. So we're all on the same page because let me just tell you, the, this figure, figuring this center out was like not my idea of a good time. I had a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, so I do have some scraps down there that I actually already used, and they're still in good shape, so I am going to reuse those, but I'll show you how I'm folding this. Let me get myself some room here. I don't think I need those two extra feathers. Um, all right, so again, large board, paint in my butt. My table is plenty large, but trying to keep it all in camera and fold petals is harder than you would think. So here's my, this is my metallic teal, okay? And oh, I just realized something. I real, okay, hold on. You guys are witnessing the madness here of me not having thoroughly planned everything out. I actually don't, want these to be closed already because I need to, the way I'm putting them in, I need them open. So let me get rid of these. And we'll, we're just wasting more zip ties today, everybody. Good thing I ordered more. Okay. I know it seems like, why am I doing that? You'll understand in a second when I fold the petal and put it in, and you'll know why I just took those out because they don't, I don't want them closed. <laughs> Uh, so let's just put one in at a time here. This is row five on the large board. I'm just using the regular set of holes right now. Okay, leave that open. Now I'm going to take my mesh. Thanks for sticking with me if you're watching. So um, what I'm doing is, okay, so I have my, these are my cut edges, the ones that I cut. I'm going to fold those in towards the center, just like this. Okay, so they meet at the center, kind of. There we go. They're, it's very kind of curly. I flatten this overnight and it's still pretty curly. Okay, so just have it meet in the center. really don't like how that's looking. Just like this. Okay, and then just scrunch up the middle, just like this. So you have this. Okay, now I'm going to put it in the zip tie so that it kind of stands up like this. So that's why I didn't want, I shouldn't have closed the zip tie because I'm putting this in and I'm zipping around it. So there wouldn't have been any way for me to put this in if I had closed it. I would have had to like push the end, like this whole thing would have had to go through my closed zip tie, which is not ideal. Okay, so it's gonna kind of look like this. Okay, we want our ruffle to kind of stand up evenly. So I kind of did that a little crooked. Okay, 
clip this off. So we're gonna try four petals in the middle here, and if it's not enough, I'll do four more. So I'm just gonna use the pair, each pair of holes here in row, what am I in? What did I say I was in? Four? No, five. I'm in five, row five. So put your zip tie in here. Okay, leave it opened. Okay, another piece of mesh. So again, I have it so that my factory edges are here. Okay, because when I'm folding it in, I'm folding so that the cut edges go on the inside here. So that'll help if there's any kind of fray. So you just kind of meet those in the middle, scrunch up the middle like this. Okay, hopefully you're evenly scrunched on both sides. If not, just readjust where you've pinched it. And then we're gonna put that into the board. And I already know I'm going to need more than I thought. I'm not gonna get away with four, I'm gonna need eight, which is fine. So we'll just actually go back and fill in here before we get too far along. So in row uh, five that I'm working on here, I thought I would maybe only do four petals like this, but I'm gonna do, pick this up. I'm gonna do eight. So here are the two that I put in. I'm gonna do one in between on each one, so it'll be eight, because it's gonna be too bald without it. And honestly, I have enough of this teal that if I, once I put in my little tiny piece of styrofoam with my little frillies there, if it's still not enough, I can add more of this mesh. I can go back a row and put more in. I can, whatever's gonna look good, we'll see what happens here. Okay, so and fold this towards the center, okay. And I'm sure, as everyone knows, I, I don't claim to come up with any of these petal folding tex techniques myself. I know some people will give them names and things like that. I don't really think it's possible to really claim ownership of a petal folding technique. But the um, reason why I have some of these on my, like, um, not this particular one that I'm doing right now, but this the one I did on the outside here, I do have a YouTube tutorial of that. The reason I do that is really just because I sell a lot of kits and I honestly, I have a lot of people that will send me a picture of one of my own wreaths and ask me how to make it. And sometimes I answer and sometimes I don't. But if, you know, I'm happy to, if it's something that's like, that I've learned from somebody else and, you know, I can point you in the direction of like how to um, at least get your petals folded and make them looking nice, you know, I'm happy to do that. And it makes more sense for me to be able to just share something that I've instructed, that I've, that I've taught. Um through my own little tutorial because most of the time if people are asking me if they've seen me before and maybe they feel like they can learn well from me. So that's why I do that. Um, the mesh is from, uh, I actually got this as a three pack from Unique in the Creek. I do not believe they have this as a three pack um, anymore. This was quite a few months ago. However, you can get all of this mesh separately um, I think I think it's all available at Craft Outlet. Uh, if you go back later and watch the replay, I did provide all of the product numbers at the beginning. And um, it's just the Deco Poly Mesh. I think it's something, when I looked at Craft Outlet, I believe it was something like maybe close to $6 a roll, um, something like that. I think when I bought it from Unique in the Creek, I want to say the three pack was $15, obviously plus tax and shipping. So it's somewhere in the five to six dollars per roll range, I believe. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I'm not really a, a deco mesh um, expert. I know there's some mesh that's better than others. I think this is this is pretty like stiff. The foil is nice. It's not a real wild, wide foil. I don't have a whole lot of fraying happening. So I think it is pretty you know, as deco mesh goes, I think the quality is pretty decent. It's better than the stuff you'd get at like Hobby Lobby or Michaels or whatever, for sure. So again, I'm leaving, I'm putting my zip tie in, leaving it open. And I didn't say, but these pieces I'm using now, this was my trial and sort of fail from yesterday, but there's really nothing wrong with the mesh. I'm folding it in the exact same way that I did yesterday. So again, it's just folded towards the center. This It actually just kind of held its shape because 
I am folding it the exact same way and there's no, no reason to waste it because again, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not fraying or looking like garbage or anything. So just gonna reuse those pieces rather than use some new ones. I'm just clipping my zip ties as I go here so I don't lose any. And let's see, we need one, two, Looks like we need three more. Um, Mary, it depends. Um, are you gonna make a flower wreath? Are you going to make a deco mesh wreath with ribbons and a sign and a bow? What, what's, your, what's your plan? Um, because I'll tell you that if you're going to make a flower, you will really love poly, just close this and I didn't mean to do that and I closed it too much I gotta snip this off can't talk and breathe at the same time if you're gonna do a flower um, you'll really love using poly burlap because with the you know you want your petals to be nice and the poly burlap really holds the shape of the petals well the problem with poly burlap is first of all the stuff that you get at like Hobby Lobby and Michaels um, is not the same quality as the stuff you buy from the craft stores. My zip tie got lost, here it is. Um, and it is a little bit more expensive. So if you're practicing fo pulled, folding petals, I recommend getting something a little cheaper just till you get the technique down. But if you're going to do, it looks like you said mesh with, okay, ribbon and a sign. So not all ribbon is, is created equal. The stuff you buy at the craft stores is not the same quality as the stuff you buy online. You want to find something with a nice, uh, like a decent wire for sure, because wire, you want to always use wire ribbon to make bows and ribbon tails on your wreaths. And um, having a decent quality ribbon that kind of feels a little bit more like, like a, um, a linen or almost like a faux burlap, uh, the thicker stuff is nicer to work with, it makes nicer bows, it holds its shape better. Um, as far as the mesh, I'm gonna be quite honest, I have used all kinds of mesh for my ribbon, my, my mesh wreaths with ribbon and a sign. The mesh is cut at 10, 10 by 10, other Mary, other Mary that commented, 10 by 10. Um, I've used stuff that I've bought online, I've used stuff that I can't see what I'm doing here. I got a lot of mesh going on in the middle here. I've used stuff that I um, have bought at Hobby Lobby or Joann's or Michael's. Um, I've kind of gotten away from doing those kinds of wreaths. It, you know, this there's like fabric mesh that's nice to work with. There's mesh that has like a jute content, which tends to be nice to work with. Um, but a, a lot of times I do just use stuff from um, Hobby Lobby. Um, because number one, I can get it in a pinch. I don't have to wait for it to ship. And number two, um, I, I think I've perfected some of my techniques so that I don't use a ton of mesh. Um, and I and I have, I the way I fold and do things, I can hide if it's fraying and that kind of thing. But a lot of people like to work with, you know, the fabric mesh is kind of an in-between if you're, it's not poly burlap and it's not the real cheap stuff. It's kind of in between. Um, the jute content stuff is, is nice too. Um, so I don't, have a, I don't have like a really great answer, um, but because there's so many options and I think I wouldn't, don't, I'll just tell you my best advice, don't, don't start with Dollar Tree stuff, don't. Like you'll regret your life decision for sure because that stuff is crap and it'll fray all over the place and you'll probably be very frustrated and want to give up. So start with something middle of the road. Maybe do some practice stuff with some Hobby Lobby mesh. See how you see how you do, if you're happy with the results, if you think you'd like to go up to something a little bit better. Because even the stuff, the stores online like Craft Outlet or, I just close this one again. Gotta pay attention to what I'm doing. Even the stores like Craft Outlet, um, or really any place, they all sell value mesh, which is like, well, I haven't bought any in a while, but it's probably like $4 a roll maybe. 
I don't know, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Like the really, the cheapest stuff you can get that doesn't have the foil content or anything in it. Um, so it's not terribly expensive, but then of course, if you're buying online, you gotta pay shipping and all that. So, but then that's another thing is like the foil content. Like this is a thinner foil. There's stuff that's really, really heavily foiled. Um, so yeah, it's a whole, there's a lot of decisions to make, I guess. So I would just get some average quality stuff. You can, I mean, like I went to Hobby Lobby today actually, and uh, they have fall ribbon out. It's not on sale yet, of course, but they have some cute fall ribbon. There's some stuff that I is out this year that I bought last year. It's the same stuff, um, but it was decent quality um, to make bows and things like that. And, you know, you just wait for the, whenever you see the, I think it's the wedding ribbon. Like that's the, that's like where they put the, that's the section. If you, uh, are waiting for it to go on sale it's usually like wedding ribbon uh i don't know what i can't remember what the category is but that's when all the mesh is on sale too for what is it 50 40 50 percent off okay so there we could actually probably leave this like this if we really wanted to with our little roughly center okay but i'm determined to try and use this and if it doesn't look okay if it doesn't look right, then it, it is what it is. But let me find the center here. That'll be an, not so easy to do. Okay, I have my tools, two random holes in the center here. Here they are. Okay, I found one. So my goal was to, uh, where's the other one? Oh, there they are, okay was to build up this ruffle enough so that when I put this in, it helps it stand up and it doesn't look like it's sticking too far out. We'll see. We shall see. There's a lot of mesh here in the middle. The struggle is real right now, everyone. I'm gonna find those two little holes. Okay, so. Now my, I want this to be like sucked down in there so you can't see the styrofoam. Oh, I think you might still be able to see this later from. Well, let's see here. Okay, is that as tight as it goes? Yeah, that's as tight as it goes. Let me twist this. So it's through those two middle holes. Oops, you can't see what I'm doing. Give this a twist. So I think what is going to end up happening is this, this little poofy thing in the center is not going to stay as it is. I'm going to have to do some adapting. So I think the um, there's enough mesh the problem is I can still see some of the whites of the, um, it's kind of sticking up too far still. So I think what I'll end up doing, and I'm not gonna do this now, but I think what I'm gonna end up doing is, when I, I'm gonna get this out of here, um, I'm gonna go back to my styrofoam cutter and cut this off further down. Let's see. Like, I think I could probably cut this in half and then it'll sit in here a little bit nicer. So it's not so sticking out so far. And it'll just be like a cute little accent in the center that kind of blends in with the ruffles as opposed to sticking out way above the ruffles. So this is still too thick. This needs to be cut maybe in half. And then I probably am gonna shave as close as I can to these stems so that the white isn't showing and then I might if I'm really feeling crazy take um see what I have for paint I have like I don't know a 20 pack of paint see if I can create something that's kind of this teal color and just paint along here so in case anything does show you it'll blend in so this was a little bit of a fail but we're gonna fix it and make it right off camera but here is our it's actually pretty cute just like this honestly here's our peacock wreath i haven't added the um hanging holes yet but here we go uh, these have you know a little bit of wire in them so I, once it's hanging i can kind of turn them around make sure all facing the direction i want them to but there we go just the mesh itself is really pretty so there you go there's our peacock wreath so Stay tuned for the final picture where I fix this thing. Probably won't be today, but I'm determined to use this. It's part of my stem. So yeah, I think cut a half, cut half of it off, put it back in here and have it just sort of be like 
a little like just yeah we don't want it to look it didn't work didn't look right but we'll fix it um, but thanks for watching me, everybody. Please feel free to check out my YouTube channel. That is where you're going to find full-length tutorials for all different kinds of wreaths if you're a beginner. Um, um, Mary, if you're making your first mesh wreath with um, ribbon and a sign, I do have a tutorial for that. I have lots of flower tutorials. I have petal tutorials. All that's on my YouTube. Um, <clears throat> and then also just be sure to check out the pinned post if you're interested in buying wreath boards um mesh any kind of wreath supplies you can check out my affiliate link for unique in the creek um, there's a link to that i have an amazon affiliate shop if you're interested in things like the zip tie gun my hot glue gun cutting board and that stuff um but yeah that's all for today everybody uh be sure to check my etsy shop if you're interested in um fall wreath kits because those will be out very shortly. I'm planning on tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, it is kind of mermaidy. I think you could very easily do a mermaid themed wreath with this mesh for sure. All right. Well, stay tuned for the final product, but I'm okay with this the way it is, but I will use that. Thanks again, everybody for watching. Have a great evening. Take care. Bye.